But Mrs. Vargas, you still haven't told me why you were so upset when I tried to start off on the high power lens. Oh my goodness, that's because whenever we start to focus a slide, we always start on low power. That would be either 4x or 10x. Now one reason we do that is because it has a very large field of view. What's the field of view? The field of view is what we see when we look through the eyepiece. When we're on low power, it's easier to locate a specimen because it looks smaller. When we're on high power, the field of view focuses much more closely on a certain part of the specimen. It looks like it's enlarged. Now, I still haven't answered the question of why I was upset. If you notice, we need to focus the slide. Right now, it's out of focus. If you notice, there's a lot of space between the slide and my objective lens. That's too much space. So I need to use one of the adjustment knobs, either this knob or this knob, to move the stage up and down, which will focus it. When we focus a slide, we always start on one of the low power objective lenses and we use this big knob. What's that big knob called? It's called the coarse adjustment knob. If you notice when I turn the coarse adjustment knob, you can visibly see the stage moving up and down. It moves the stage a lot. It focuses quickly. If I bring it all the way to the top, there's still a space between the slide and the bottom of the lens. So I'm not running a risk of crashing my slide through the lens. What you were doing was you wanted to use this knob on high power. As I said, we always begin by focusing on low power on the coarse adjustment knob. This helps us to locate the specimen and we use the finder needle inside, we point it to the specimen by moving the slide as we're looking at the specimen. We can slightly move the slide, making sure the slide clips are on it, the stage clips, and we use the course adjustment knob to bring it into focus with the arrow pointing to the specimen. Now I'm ready to put it on to high power. So I'm going to use the revolving nose piece to move the objective lens into 40x, the blue lens, until it clicks into place. Now I'm going to look through the eyepiece and I will finish focusing using the fine adjustment knob. This is the small knob here. So I'll make any fine adjustments using this knob. Now if you look at the stage, you'll notice as I move this, you can't even see the stage move. It's moving, but it's by such small amounts that you can't see it. Notice how close the high power objective lens is to the slide. It if looks like it's touching. It almost is. If I were now to use the coarse adjustment knob on high power like you were about to do, I would ram the slide right into the lens and probably crack both the objective lens and the slide and make a very terrible cracking sound. We don't want this to happen because we don't want to break our lenses. So again, in review, we always, once we center our slide on the stage, we start by focusing on low power, 10x. If we're having trouble locating the specimen, go down to 4x, which has a bigger field of view, and we will find our specimen. We can adjust our slide slightly until the pointer that we see in the eyepiece is pointing to our specimen. We then move to a higher power, such as 10x. This is still low power, but it's larger than 4x. Bring it into focus using course adjustment knob, because I'm not running a risk of ramming the stage through my objective lens. Once the pointer has it focused on 10x, I will use the revolving nose piece 
move the objective lens into high power and be sure that I'm now only focusing with the fine adjustment knob. We work in teams oftentimes during our microscope labs so that partners can help each other to be sure that they're not using the coarse adjustment knob on high power. I am so glad you were here. I would have been really, really upset if I broke a slide. Well, I'm glad I was here to explain that too. But we're not quite done. We're almost finished. I told you before that when light comes through the objective lens, this lens will bend the light and create an image here. This part of the microscope is called the body tube. Students, can you please locate the body tube on your microscopes? So now we have an image that's created in the body tube. That image gets magnified by this lens called the eyepiece lens. I've heard it called the ocular. This is also called the ocular as well. It can be called by both names. So the image that's in the body tube is enlarged by however much the magnification was on the objective lens. 4x means it's four times bigger than what's on the slide. 10x means it's 10 times bigger than what's on the slide. 40x means it's 40 times bigger than what's on the slide. But that again just gives us an image. The ocular or eyepiece lens magnifies always 10x. So it will take the magnified image in the body tube and magnify it 10 times more. So there's always a really good question, Mrs. Jordan, that I ask my students. I try to trick them on tests. Do you know what that question is? Let's see if you can answer it. I'm sure you know the answer. The question is, if I have my objective lens, let's say on 10x, how much bigger is what I'm seeing here than what's actually on the slide? Now we have another way of asking that, and that is, what is the total magnification? I know the magnification of my objective lens is 10x. The magnification of my eyepiece lens is 10x. So the total magnification would be 10 times 10, or 100x. That means when I'm on low power 10x, the image I'm seeing through the eyepiece is 100 times bigger than what is actually on the slide. So students, I'd like you now to, re to move your revolving nose piece to 40x and with your partner explain what is the total magnification when it's on 40x. In other words, how much bigger is what you're seeing in the eyepiece than what's actually on the slide? 